you know, it was supposed to be just an average morning at the sanctuary. Show up, do a little training, do a little filming, introduce our new dog trainer to some of the dogs. And uh, I get the, I get a phone call from M2, which M2 never calls me unless it's something important. And she asks me, hey, the new girl that started yesterday morning, or excuse me, the new girl that showed up yesterday morning that was supposed to be starting today, um, is she there? Do you see, a, do you see a, a, a strange, random little gray car? And I'm like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I just, I just saw it pull in and then pull out really fast. And she says to me, well, she's 20 minutes late over here and, and she hasn't shown up. But uh, more importantly, she was spotted driving through town today by one of our other employees with a dude in her car, some guy. I'm like, wait, and she didn't tell me about some guy she was bringing. She just said she had two dogs. No, there was a guy with her. She says, can you go over to the trailer, the little trailer that we, you know, we put her in and knock on the door and see if there's some random dude in there? So, while I'm going over to the little camper trailer to knock on the door looking for some guy, M2 is waiting for her to show up at our other location to start her first day of work. So I have M2 on speakerphone while I'm doing this. And as I'm walking over there, M2 says, oh, she just showed up finally, you know, 20 minutes late. Mind you, where we have her in the camper trailer at the sanctuary is literally three minutes from our intake location uh, here in Assumption Parish. So <laughs> then there's that. So I knock on the door and right away I hear moving around inside. I'm like, oh wow, huh, there's actually somebody in there. Maybe one of her dogs. So I knock again. And on that second time I knock, okay, so on this camper trailer, I don't know if all camper trailers have it, but when you close the door, there's like a, a, a safety bar thing where you pull it up and you pull it over to block the door and you hook it in place. It's to keep the camper door from blowing open in the wind. A lot of, I think, campers and RVs probably have it for a safety measure so the door doesn't blow open and you know, pull off the hinges. Well, I noticed that the, the bar has been pulled over and locked in place. So if there is anybody in there, they're locked inside. And I'm like, no way, man. She didn't lock some guy in there. Like you, you would be locked, locked in. She wouldn't do that. <laughs> so I thought. Until someone actually tried to open the door from the inside of the camper. And I'm like, no fucking way, man. So I pull the bar up and I yank open the door. And there's some guy there like sweating bullets. Like, oh, 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 oh. And I, I didn't even say anything to him yet. He goes, I, I, I'm leaving tonight. I, I'm going out on the Greyhound bus. I'm like, I, I, I didn't say anything to you. Well, well uh, 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 yeah, I'm leaving. I said, oh, well, who are you? Oh, I, I came I came across the country from California with her to, you know, to, to make sure she got here safely. I said, huh. That's funny because when she pulled up to the property yesterday morning and M2 greeted her at the gate, you weren't in the car. Just, just saying. So uh, we call Miss California girl over to the property and I start jamming her up and she tries to convince us that yes, indeed, the guy was in the car with her yesterday morning. And we're like, <laughs> wow, like people were there. They saw you pull up with two dogs and that is it. Um, but how about the fact that if you were trying to sneak him on the property, you didn't let us know he was with you. Oh wait, that's why it's called sneaking. That's why you locked him in the trailer so he wouldn't come out and blow your cover. And I'm like, okay, you know what? He looked really like, he was like sweating, like sweating when, when he opened the door. Like really, really nervous. 
and I'm like, uh-uh, uh-uh, I, I, I don't like this. So I said, you know what, get your shit and get the fuck off my property now. And she was like, what? I said, get off my property now. And I walked away and I saw her like grabbing stuff and you know, throwing it in her car. <laughs> now mind you, it hasn't even been 24 hours. And um, we went into the trailer after they left and we nailed it. There was a bunch of CO2 canisters, which is another way for those of you that don't know, um, called huffing. And um, so they were getting high, like 15 canisters. I got pictures actually. I don't know why I'm telling you all this, but it's just the freaking frustration we go through with hiring people. Like, fuck! Sorry, F-bomb, it's F-bomb day. Fuck! <laughs> like, we're so short-handed, and these fucking people, man, they're fucking crazy! Like, this is like real emotion here. I'm not, like, pretending. M2 was so angry, she was crying on the phone, like, so furious. So, I don't know what we're going to do at the intake location because we're down to like one guy and Perry. You know, Tanya's husband. That's it. Like, we don't even have anybody to work there. And stop. Don't, don't come at me with it. It's my dream job. I'll be the best worker you ever had. Because everybody says that. Everybody. It's my dream job. I'll be the best worker you ever had. Matter of fact, Miss Katie from California wrote that to me in an email. I'm done. I'm done with my rant. GoPro, stop recording.